Well hi there, welcome back to A Bus and Beyond and today I am at Dolphin Motorhomes here on the south coast of England to check out the Swift Carrera 184. Now it's a brand new van so it's going to be really interesting to see and it looks like it's really really good quality so let's take a look. Right, so starting at the front, the Swift Carrera 184 is based on a Fiat Ducato chassis. It's a 2.3 litre diesel engine with 140 horsepower and it looks pretty sleek in this grey colour, doesn't it? It's very nice. We've got 16 inch alloy wheels. Now it's finished in this dark grey paint, which is a real welcome actually because a lot of these vehicles are finished in white as we well know. Uh, but yeah, this dark grey is really nice and it's also got these decals which are an even darker grey with like a blue outlining. So that looks really nice. They're across the front there and then they're also down the side with a bit of black and blue uh, and that generally seems to be the theme. You've got a nice dark grey black and blue paint scheme on this. Down the driver's side you've got a, a nice big window which is opening and it's also got blinds which we'll see when we go inside. You've also got a couple of water points. This is a water point that is actually a hose attachment so you can actually fill it up um, by plugging a hose in there. And then as we move further down, you've got a couple of things like the wastewater drain outlet is at the bottom there. Above that, you have the cassette toilet point and then the electrical hookup is just behind there. So that's to connect to uh, yeah your electrical hookup or shore power as you would call it in the States. Bit of branding on the side there. So you've got the 184 badging with Carrera and then some um, birds above that. And then you've also got a bit of like a Union Jack symbol on the, the side there next to one of the other windows on this side. Now the Union Jack obviously because these are made in the UK. Below that you also have that point there is the exhaust for the diesel heater. And then the other point is another vent for uh, the boiler, I believe. Now, at the back of the Swift Carrera, you've got barn doors, which we'll have a look at. We'll open those later on. Uh, again, you've got this stripe that follows all the way. I'm not sure it's on the actual roof of the van. I would never know, because I'm not that tall. Uh, but you've got a Swift badge up at the top. Uh, you can see there, that it's based on the Ducato by Fiat. And then another Swift badge with again, a bit of a Union Jack on there as well. I should also mention that these two windows on the back here do open as well. And again, they have blinds on which we'll have a look at inside. Now there's quite a few goodies here on the passenger side. One of which is the access into the actual habitation area, which we'll have a look at in a second. But you've also got a barbecue point. So if you want an external barbecue, you can connect that onto there and that connects to your gas bottles inside. You've got three windows on the side here, all three of them open. They're all slightly tinted as well, not like full privacy um, glass, but they are tinted, so a little bit darker. What else have we got here? We've also got another water filling point. And then down the bottom there, you've got your fresh water. Right up at the top, you've got a nice big two-lay wind-out awning. It is a manual wind awning and then underneath that you've got an awning light as well that you can see on there. The habitation door does have a huge window, real big opening window uh, and then an electrically operated step down the bottom there as well to make it a bit easier to get in and out of. Now this type of van conversion based on the Fiat Ducato is quite common here in the UK, we see a lot of these. This one is currently marketed at around about £75,500 so we all want to see what it's like inside. Let's see what you get for that £75,500. Let's take a look inside. We're really excited to be bringing you a paid partnership with BetterHelp. I'm so glad that I get to talk to you about better mental health and how you can achieve it. We've always said that getting away in your camper can really help clear your mind, but it's not always feasible to get away. And sometimes we need to give our minds some help to get back on track to a more fulfilled and happy life. I found better health service so easy to use. I just answered a few questions and it matched me to a credentialed therapist who I can chat to either online, on the phone, or even via video call. 
it's really easy to get signed up to this service. Just click the link in our description and on the screen now. Clicking the link also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. It's no secret that I've had my own mental health challenges and I find that regular sessions with my lovely therapist can help me gain some more freedom from the mental load I carry around. And she even gives me techniques I can use to help me relax and get more out of life. And if I ever felt like my therapist wasn't quite the right fit, which can be common when starting therapy, then BetterHelp makes it super easy to switch to a new therapist. So I really hope this partnership with BetterHelp can help our subscribers live a happier and healthier life, just like they've helped over 4 million others already. Once again, the link is in the description below and on the screen now for 10% off your first month. Thank you again to BetterHelp for working with us. I think the first thing that hits you when you first come into this van is just how light and airy it is. There's a couple of skylights, loads of windows around, and a real sort of light cabinetry as well. Swift have been making vans for a long time now, and it really shows, they obviously know what they're doing. And it's interesting because a lot of this cabinetry feels real sort of heavy duty, quite weighty products, yet this vehicle does come in at three and a half tons, so you can drive it on a normal car license. So. It's, it's quite clever how they've managed to do that, but let's take a bit more of a detailed look at the uh, Swift Carrera 184. So let's start with the cab, and the first thing that really stands out is this lovely skylight above. This just brings so much light in. Yes, you lose a bit of storage. Now, you'd normally probably have a bit of a cupboard up there or a shelf or something, so you do lose that. However, I think that's quite a good compromise, really, because it is so light and airy in the front here. You do, for nighttime, you do obviously have a blind that you can close um, to shut that off and make it nice and dark. But that, along with the other roof light behind, makes it, yeah, just so light. And this one does open as well. The front one doesn't, but this one does open. I think I touched on it outside. 2.3 litre diesel engine, 140 horsepower. And that's mated to a six speed gearbox as well. So should be nice and economic for your long trips. Uh, you do have a built-in blind at the front there, which lifts right up and uh, yeah, it looks really good actually because it doesn't get in the way when it's not being used. So it keeps it sort of nice and out of the way. It's not intrusive at all. And again, on the side, you also have um, some built-in blinds as well. Again, which look completely hidden when, you, when they're not being used. So that's good. Now it's actually been a little while since we've been inside a Fiat Ducato. And I think the last one we went in was a Bailey based vehicle which was quite a long time ago and this is definitely a much bigger step in quality it's a big step up the actual steering wheel feels really nice to hold you've got plenty of buttons on there you've got cup holders which the one we went in didn't even have cup holders down here you've got cup holders down there another one there um, so yeah plenty of space to put your coffee you've also got a 12 volt plug at the front there along with a USB port You've got um, all your controls here for various different things, you know, like rear, that, I wonder if that still works, rear uh, window heater, probably not actually, I very much doubt that still works, um, but yeah, you know, sort of locks and things like that, traction control. This does have um, air conditioning, it's not a climate control setup, it's just normal air conditioning in this one, and the screen in the middle here is much better quality as well, it's got uh, all sorts of different things, it's touch screen. Um, yeah, it's just so much better than the one that we looked at many moons ago. Now, both seats are captain's chairs and swivel round, so you've got uh, armrests either side, and like I say, they both swivel round. Currently, just got the passenger seats swivel round at the minute, but then really nice material. This is like a almost like a suede sort of Alcantara finish in the middle, this light bit, and then it's um, I don't know if it's leather or fake leather, uh, the grey bit is sort of a, a leather feel to it. And they just feel really comfortable, really nice. Uh, I think you could do plenty of miles in this and not get tired at all. So yeah, it's a nice cab. And like I say, it's just so light and airy, which is great. Right, so moving back from the driver's side, and this is where you've got your dinette area. So you've got, it's like a half dinette, uh, which means you've got your 
other two seats that are belted travel seats so you do have four belted seats in this vehicle and it does sleep four people as well which we'll have a look at the beds in a bit um but yeah half the net so you basically use the front seats to uh, form the other half you've got a decent sized table that is removable and you can actually put that outside as well so you've got a decent sized table then you do have an extension piece as well which if i can do this one-handed got it started at least and then yeah it spins around now ideally you'd spin it the other way because i oh it does just miss the kitchen area there uh but yeah this will spin all the way around to meet the actual passenger seat here which just allows you to join in with the fun at dinner time so you can actually eat as well and everyone can get around there nice and easily so that's good like i say you can remove this table so you'd probably remove it for traveling just to give you a bit more space and it does also form part of the bed you can see the lower rail um so yeah one of the double beds is up at the front here but we'll look at that later on and then above the dinette you've got the first of many cupboards here in this van um they've got like a little catch underneath that you pull and they open up and they feel really really good quality this feels really nice and the catches feel nice as well they're sort of nicely damped i like that that's really good um yeah so not bad size cupboard they're a little bit smaller at the front here than they are in the back but they're still a really good size so you can get plenty of things inside there um yeah and then behind those two cupboards you've got a little shelf area as well just to put a few things maybe dog leads that kind of stuff and then underneath you've got a nice long strip light that runs all the way back and you've also got a three pin plug and also a TV aerial socket and um, yeah socket and an aerial point so I think ideally what you'd do is you'd put your TV up on here so that you can sit in the captain's chairs and watch TV below those two cupboards you've got uh, a nice size window uh, which does open and then you've also got the usual blackout blind and also fly screen quite a nice touch uh, for this seat here you've actually got a little armrest um, which is just somewhere to put your arm off and there's nowhere to put your arm at all so that's quite good and then you've also got uh, a double USB A point here you can see I forgot to charge my batteries for the camera so that's what that's doing in there we spoke about this briefly but this is one of the roof lights uh, this does fully open and then again you've got blackout blind and fly screen on there as well so let's have a look on the passenger side you've got your big sliding door that we saw as we came in and this actually has a huge built-in fly screen that goes all the way across these are great these are fantastic for when you're in either i don't know scotland or um yeah, when the hot climates when you want to have the door open but your lights on inside it just keeps the flies out which is good and then yeah big opening window so this has got again blinds and fly screens built in but this is a really big window this is nice also in the door they put some shelving again somewhere to put your flip-flops or something and then above the sliding door this is your main control panel so you've got all sorts here you've got a little shelf on this side You've got your levels for your water, so you can see it's empty at the minute. You've got, um, yeah, and wastewater, fresh water, um, awning lights and all sorts. This is how you actually turn the whole van on. Then you've also got indications for your battery voltage and all that kind of stuff. This is just to dim the lights in here. We'll turn them off and back on again. And then you have more information based on your, uh, more, more information for your heating hot water and all that kind of stuff so yeah plenty of info and loads of different controls i think i might just turn the heating on there actually oops don't need that on it's woman roasting in here now now i apologize if all you can hear is the rustling of this like sticky cling film that's here to protect the carpets every time i tread on it and move can you hear that it's a bit like maybe you can't hear it it's a bit asmr actually anyway uh, this is where things get really interesting so the kitchen as you can see is absolutely huge and I thought when I walked in here I thought wow what a lot of storage you've got however it's not quite as it seems because if you lift this up here you can see it's full of cushions and then on the side here you've got a button and then another little catch in here 
and this all pulls out that drops down anyway it does all sorts to create quite a nice bed down the bottom here which we're going to have a look at in a bit so we'll come back to this because yeah a little bit different to what you'd normally see in a van conversion like this anyway let's move on and we'll come back to that like i say so yes there it is also worktop obviously when you're not using the bed this is a huge bit of worktop loads and loads of prep space so really quite impressive actually You've got your sink, hot and cold water, and then a two burner hob with um, automatic ignition as well. So yeah, nice little setup here. I've not actually seen this one. I think this must be fairly new. I might be wrong, but I've not seen this style before. Obviously there's loads of these double burner and uh, sink combo units, but yeah, I've not seen that particular one from Dometic. So I bet it's a fairly new one. Tons of worktop space and then you've got a, um, another window which does open on that side as well actually I tell a lie it doesn't open I take that back and that will be because obviously if you opened it and then opened the sliding door you'd rip the window off so yeah this one doesn't open quite rightly so but it does still have uh, a blind it's got a fly screen fully enough even though it doesn't open but it's also got a blind for night time above the worktop space you've got two enormous cupboards these are really smart actually these are a nice amount of storage tons of storage in there for all sorts of things i'd quite like to have maybe seen a, a shelf has this one got the shelf in yeah i mean i'd like to have seen a, a shelf because obviously once you start putting tins and things in there it's just gonna be wasted space above it it's great for cereal boxes and that kind of thing but yeah it would have been quite nice to see a shelf however you do also have a TV booster point in here as well. So when you arrive on site, you basically unscrew that, lift it up, and that's your aerial so you can get better TV reception. Plenty of light strips running all the way back. So all the way from the front there, all the way back to the back of the van. So it gives plenty of light in here. And then again, underneath, you've got spotlights as well. So yeah, you've got tons of lighting. There is also two three pin plugs mounted on the wall and then beneath the cooker and sink you've got various different cupboards so underneath this one you've got cutlery drawer which is a decent size actually that's quite good you've got light switches over here that does the lighting down the bottom there you've got a cupboard which is a decent size as well. There's also an oven slash grill set up, which is useful for things like pizzas or toast or anything like that. And you've got some more drawers down the bottom, again, which are pretty deep. And a really rustly carpet. <laughs> and then a huge cupboard right at the back. that's actually your water pump as well so if you have any issues with that at least that's easily accessible in fact I actually could do with that connector there for our van do you reckon they'd notice if I took it <laughs> so yeah I think it's a really really good size kitchen actually not quite as big as it first seems because like I say those cupboards all down there are all to do with a bed but regardless it's still a really really good big light airy kitchen now you would look at that and you think well whereabouts is your fridge that is actually the other side so it's one of these fancy magic dometic fridges opens both ways so you can see there you can access it from the back here or if you're at the front access it that way yeah witchcraft that is but um yeah it's a fridge and a little freezer compartment in here as well quite a small freezer bit really but not bad, you know, I think you can actually remove that as well. If you didn't want to use a freezer compartment, just use a fridge, you can do. So yeah, that's actually a really good size fridge. I like that. And it's nice that it's actually at um, chest height as well, so you can easily just get things in and out of there. Beneath the fridge, you've got a cupboard, and it's got a few things in. So it's got, currently it's got some 
um, infill cushions and things I think in there at the bottom but you can see there is actually a table and a leg for the table and that is for the rear lounge which we'll have a look at in a second I'll tell you what I would love to peel this off oh, but I'm not going to <laughs> Now another feature that I actually really like in this van is the washroom. Again, with the theme of this whole van, it's really light, feels really good quality uh, and really airy inside. So let's take a look in there. The washroom is accessed via this timbre door. Now it's not actually a green timbre door, this is just a protective covering for the new owner. Um, but yeah, it's a decent quality timbre door. Sometimes these can feel really poor quality, but no, it's this decent one, this one. Feels nice and thick. This is actually, this is aluminium uh, with sort of, I don't know if it's aluminium or plastic inserts, but this bit here is aluminium. So it all feels really nice quality. But as you can see, the washroom is lovely. It's really, really nice. It carries on that theme from outside, so you've got like the seagulls um, in the splashback there. Loads and loads of light, uh, a skylight at the top there, which is nice, and that opens as well. So you do actually get natural light in here, which is great. You've got your shower, a big mirror, a little cupboard there, so you can put all your toiletries, cassette toilet, with um, an electric flush. Now this is actually the winder for the awning outside, so ideally you'd probably find somewhere a bit better to put that. Uh, but then over here, like I say, you've got your shower with hot and cold water, and it's actually separate to the actual sink um, tap. The sink just folds down. Now sometimes these can feel really poor quality, but again, this one feels great quality. Feels nice, it's a little bit plastic, but that's inevitable, but it does feel decent you know with a metal plug at the bottom here and also a metal tap so yeah it just makes it feel that little bit more more luxurious i think it also helps that you've got dark gray white you know just breaks it up a bit and then like this almost like marble effect um sides to the the washroom as well so that makes it look really really nice that folds away when you're not using it so you've got a bit more space to um have a shower and then you've got a lovely wooden uh, baseboard down the bottom here as well which just makes it a bit nicer to stand on and again continues with that air of luxury if you're going to use this as a drying room which you often do during the day when you're out camping you've just got a little pull down rail there which just allows you to do that hanging towels and things like that and then a big light across the top there as well you've also got some hooks to hang towels during the day and again you've got the same hook on the outside here as well which is quite nice so you can hang things up just if you do have that out don't smack your head on it because that looks pretty painful if you do one thing i've just noticed is this timber door has got a strip magnet all the way down the bottom there which then joins up with here and so it feels really nice when you shut it yeah it just locks in nicely however when you come to open it you've got to put quite some force into it which is obviously great for when you're driving because it's not going to fly open obviously if you slam the brakes on or accelerate but yeah i think you're going to build up some muscles opening and closing that <laughs> Right, now we move on to the rear of the van. And this is in a layout that we tend to buy tons of here in the UK. We love these rear lounge layouts. We get a lot of rain here in the UK, which will be no surprise to anyone watching this. Um, so we often have to spend a lot of time inside our vans, but thankfully there's a lot of manufacturers that build vans that are aimed at the UK market. So this is ex exactly that. You've got a couple of sofas either side uh, and they're a decent size again finished with this nice um suede finish in the middle here with this like faux leather on the side and it's really decent quality it just feels really really nice and thankfully they are decent depths as well often these are quite shallow but this is a decent depth so it's nice and supportive under your legs and it's just a nice sociable place to sit you've got windows all the way around as you can see and they all open They've all got those blinds on again, so you've got 
um, blackout blinds, fly screens. So you can sit here in the summer with all these windows open, um, fly screen shut so you're not going to get attacked by mozzies and uh, yeah just have a really relaxing evening watching the sunset out the back here almost like today actually same on the back here so these all open blinds on both of these so it's actually a really really nice place to sit down the bottom here you will see a big socket for that table leg that we saw in this cupboard here so you can sit and have your dinner at the back here nice and comfortably so it gives you a couple of different options for eating which is pretty good this does convert into a bed as well which we'll have a look at in a bit and then underneath here you've also got storage quite a good size storage actually in fact that's for your gas bottle in that side and then in that side you've got your electric box as well on the opposite side you've got the bed frame as you can see and then you've also got some drawers underneath so you can put some clothes in there that's the same on this side another drawer you don't have drawers on this side because obviously you just lift it up and access it from the top here like I said about and they are pretty comfy to sit here actually I could imagine maybe sitting put some cushions here sitting back and relaxing yeah quite nice actually right let's have a look what else we get in here so above the windows on both sides that in total there's four cupboards in here so in this one and in here they are mainly just cupboards um, but then you will do also have that's your solar charge controller for the solar panels that are up on the roof that just char charges the batteries for you and then on this side I think they're just cupboards if I remember rightly yeah yeah so there's a decent amount of storage in this van which is what you need you do need a lot of overhead cupboards because obviously if you choose to have a rear lounge like this you have no garage so you've got to really maximize the storage elsewhere and I think this does a pretty good job obviously I'm thinking where would I put my bedding but you probably would fit underneath the bed there you've got another opening skylight again with the relevant vents and then there's also speakers in the back here so you do actually um, you can listen to music in the back here which is nice you've got plenty of lighting again so you've got strip lights underneath there controlled oh I say it's controlled from there. there like that that is a USB socket and then you've got lights up at the top there as well so plenty of lighting in here all the way around on this side you've got another tv aerial point a three pin plug two usbs and then a light switch it's also worth mentioning on the outside of the kitchen area you've got your button for your step so that's electrically operated step just using that button and then you've also got a three pin plug that uh, yeah, just allows you to plug stuff in outside as well and that is IP44 so it's not fully waterproof but splash proof at least and then down the bottom here you also have a rail so you can put that table there on the outside here as well so you can just pop that out there put your drinks on here and sit outside Now we'll take a look at opening these barn doors but um, as it's a rear lounge setup you're not going to have much storage or anything like that unfortunately but you do have access under there uh, but it is just to the drawers so you know it's not like you can actually put anything there and then on this side it's just where your, your gas bottle is but that's only accessed from underneath the, um, the seat there. So yeah, not a huge amount to see. However, obviously if you, if it's a lovely sunny day, you could have those doors open and sit there and have a G&T and watch the sun go down. So let us know in the comments below, which do you prefer, rear lounge or a garage at the back here? Is the compromise 
worth it to sort of lose that storage but then be able to open the back doors sit and have a beer and and look out over the sunset let us know in the comments below right so sleeping arrangements are quite interesting in this this is the uh, rear sofas made up into a double bed and it's a really good size double bed actually um, it just the slats pull out of this side and then you rearrange the cushions to create that double bed which looks good but the interesting one is the one in the front now i had to get some help with this because i had no idea how to do it this contraption that we saw at the front here all opens up and creates this really big bed it's blooming huge now you'd want a um i think you'd want a topper just to even up this bit but it's not bad it's not bad it's pretty sturdy as well but yeah i'm quite impressed with that that is a really big bed you can still get out to go to the shower facilities what's interesting it gives you plenty of flexibility as well because you've still got the seats in the front there so you could either maybe make all the beds up kids could go to sleep in the back nice and early and then um, you could sit and have a drink still in the nice comfy seats at the front here and then when you're ready to go to bed you can go to bed or you could chuck the kids in the front there and then leave this made up as sofas sit and have a beer glass of, glass of wine or whatever and then turn it into a bed and go to bed so yeah plenty of flexibility and um yeah two decent double beds so that's really quite quite impressive i like that and i do really like the fact that all these infill cushions and everything all get put away inside that clever cupboard area at the front there so it's not um stuffed in wardrobes and things like that so that's really really good yeah i'm impressed with that something innovative and clever nice to see so there we have it that's the swift carrera 184 what do you guys think those beds are really really interesting i've never seen that before especially in a van conversion i think the beds are actually really good size to say what size van it's based on and it also facilitates two double beds without using a pop top as well so yeah i'm impressed with that that's pretty good let us know in the comments below what you think and a huge thank you to dolphin motones for allowing us to come and film if you're interested please uh, check out the link in the description below and that will take you straight to dolphin motones where you can get in touch and uh, maybe come and have a look at some of the vans that they've got on offer thank you so much for watching please hit that like button if you've enjoyed the video and consider subscribing as well because there's plenty more videos to come we've got van tours and we've also got our crafter build which we've got loads more left to do on that so please do consider subscribing and we will see you in the next video thank you so much for watching cheers